Mike Hornby is, is, is here to talk about a meeting he attended. I have testified in only one trial, and I've been subpoenaed a few times, but only actually went on the stand. And this was, I was a volunteer firefighter, and I witnessed an accident that, that happened. At the time, I was actually a safety engineer for an explosives plant. And so I was put on this, the, the, the witness stand, and this prosecutor said, you know, what's your name? I said, I told him, and he said, and what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a safety engineer for, going to name the company. And he just looked at me because it didn't occur to him that I was a volunteer. And it took him a long, you, I could see him thinking, why did I call him to, <laughs> to be a witness? And I just said, well, yeah, and I was also a firefighter. And, so witness the accident and such, but yeah, it happens. Yeah. It happens. Coffin, does it happen to you? Oh, never. It's never happened. Never. Ha you're it, always, it always prepared, prepared, right? No. Well, <laughs> I, actually, I was talking to someone yesterday, and I was like, I, I don't care how much you prepare, uh, something, you know, something's going to come up that you don't anticipate. Right. And it's just, it's just how it goes, and it's, it's, it's like riding a roller coaster. You have ups and downs during a trial, and. And uh, you got to be ready. It's it's ex but it's what's exciting about the profession. Anything can happen. So where you been? So uh, yeah, we just uh, Crush and I went down to Myrtle Beach, uh, visited uh, Crush's sister. On, on we were on the way to Charleston, South Carolina, for the Southern Legislative Southern, Southern States Legislative Conference. It was uh, basically 20, 22, 25 Southern states. Uh, legislators and uh, a lot of staff members uh, going down there, getting training, getting their their, their uh, credits, if you will, to get their uh, education credits. Um, Trey Gowdy was the keynote oh, wow. um, on on Sunday. I really was blown away by his presentation. I I, I thought based on what I'd seen on TV and what I knew of him. I knew he was a smart guy, eloquent, but I thought it'd be kind of a Fox News speech, but it was absolutely uh, breathtaking. It was a, uh, he, even the, all the Democrats, Republicans, everybody was very, very floor. He was, he was brilliant. Um, what was his theme? So he, he kind of went with, um, because he said, yeah, what, what's he looking forward to? What would he do uh, if if he could have everything he wanted to? Uh, and his wish was to look through the eyes of people that aren't you. So, And, and he used the analogy of his very, very good friend, Tim Scott. Um, and he said, you know, they've been friends for years, but he never really looked through the eyes of an African American man, and he, he, didn't, he said he couldn't couldn't see that, uh, but it really came to light once they became good friends, and they, they made a lot of time spent together. Um, you know, Tim Scott's the only African American senator in the Senate, and he still stopped multiple times going into the building. Well, it's a Republican, he, he, there's, there's yeah, a, a Republican, yeah. Right. But what I'm saying is, he still stopped going into the building. He's a very recognizable national person. Um, so those are just the, some of the examples he had, and obviously, I'm nowhere near as eloquent as, as he was, but he, he was very, very good. He's a former prosecutor. He's a former prosecutor. He, he did. Uh, he got into some some prosecuting stuff, and he, he, he talked a lot. He was very funny. Well, he made fun of Lindsey Graham a lot, which I thought was pretty pretty neat. In a good humored way. Good humor. Oh yeah, absolutely. Very very. He was uh, excellent. I, I would recommend uh, if you ever. Did you ask him to be on the show? I did not even get within 50 feet of him. Does he know who you are? He does not know who I well, am. Well, how? Nobody knows. He I'm, lives I'm a, a, a first-year legislator. You know, <laughs> the audience here barely knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, it, it, it's one of those things where he was kind of rustled in, and there was probably 2,000 people in the room, so... Um, it was what were was some packed. of the other themes and, and focuses of the conference? So um, there were a lot of breakout sessions. Um, Mike Height was there too. So Mike and I kind of went to different sessions so we could see di different things. Uh, we got a preview of the 2023 Farm Bill, um, which is every five, every 10 years they, they, they bring up the Farm Bill. So we got a little preview of that. Um, the this, one, is, this is bipartisan. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Everybody from okay. both, both parties, anybody is, is invited. Um, and the the one really good one was the um, was talking about the federal funds and, and what are all these states going to do? Because right now 
there's generational money that's coming from the federal government. Every state has accesses. Um, and up on the panel was North Carolina, Oklahoma, Virginia, Florida, and uh, I think uh, Tennessee. And, and the, the gentleman from Florida, the senator from Florida, was talking about their $119 billion budget. Um, and that just, it really put things into perspective for us sitting in the audience from West Virginia where our budget's, you know, right under nine. <laughs> so that, yeah, that includes federal funds. But um, the, the consensus um, was, you know, the, Florida was going to do some tax cuts. North Carolina was. Uh, I was really shocked uh, that the folks from Oklahoma are not interested in, in giving tax cuts or they, they actually want to increase taxes. Um, so there was a broad swathe of, of different, you know, the gentleman from Virginia was, was a Democrat, so they had some ideas about infrastructure and things like that. Uh, it was a good conversation. It was good to hear um, and, and go through those things and kind of listen. So. Now, was this open to the public or do no, you only have for to be a legislator, legislator? <clears throat> Legislate or, or um, work in the government, essentially, be, be part of the government. So, so what did you hope to get out of it? Oh, really, I want to learn um, more, but more ideas from some of the states that are doing well. Um, I, I thought it was neat to get into, to hear, we sat in, I sat in an education uh, committee meeting. It really, it seems like all the states are really... I didn't realize how much of the same legislation is going on throughout the states, especially in education, with early education, things that they're doing like that. So uh, school resource offices is something that came up. Um, so it was a broad, you know, swath of, of subjects, and I, I thought it was very, very helpful. Does it change what you bring to the state house next time? I think it, it, it can bring more ideas, more, um, you, you, you meet other people, you get to see what's what's working in other states, and it just brings that, hey, I, I heard somebody's doing this, what if we could do that? So were you assigned, you, you and, and Mike, were you, did you choose to go, or were you assigned to go? Could any of the West Virginia legislators Any of the West Virginia legislators could have gone. Um, obviously, when I heard this was going on, I went to uh, the speaker and asked if I could... Uh, if I could go and what the policy was, and he, uh, he put me on the education committee and said, absolutely, here's, it's a three-day conference, here's, here we go. So I was happy to do that, and I got a little scholarship to go to, so. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And it, it's, you know, the Southern Legislative Con it, it's a large conference, and then they have the, the, the national one, too, where everybody goes, to. I haven't heard about that one yet. Mm -hmm. Were any of those 22 states that were represented, are they are they all part-time legislators? Or? I don't know the answer to that, man. I think I'm, from what, the ones I met, most of them are. The, I know, like, Pennsylvania is full-time. Yeah, they weren't there. Well, they're not. Yeah, they're not so. They're not so. <laughs> they're above Mason-Dixon. Like, yeah. Um, what issue did you see being addressed down there that, that you would think would be the next focus in West Virginia? So I, I really like the the, fo the the focus on in the education committee that the, the, the school resource officer um, model that uh, North Carolina and, and South Carolina kind of adopted, where they took some of their infrastructure money and, and used that to fund hardening the schools and then they used their excess funds that they have in their regular budget to do resource offices so it wasn't like using one-time money to fund jobs which i thought was that's a really good way to kind of combine the two to use your infrastructure money on infrastructure but use some of the excess that you have in your in your in your budget to to do that so um i thought that was a very interesting um way to to address that would that be anything that could ever be it's doable in West Virginia. Well, I think anything's doable. It's it's about getting the people. Like like Craig said, it's about getting negotiations started, getting a bill started, find getting the right people behind it, and then working towards it. I know John Hardy and I are going to make it a, a priority to try and find money for for more resource offices. Whether it's one in every school and one in every two schools. However, we need to figure that. Eight, we need to get started. 
So we need to, the conversation started. I know the Board of Education has already started something locally. Um, I listened to Nate the other day. I guess we haven't done anything yet, but um, we need to do something. So um, whether, whether we can do it legislatively, I'm, I'm, I'm game to, to start those conversations. And this is clearly the time to be having these discussions versus wait until the session starts. Uh, this is the probably the biggest thing that, that I've learned because when I got down there, I was like, okay, ready to work. Well, all the work had already been done. I didn't realize how much work we did now Dur during the, the interims, during the buildup. This is the time where all the conversations, all the negotiations are, are happening. I know corrections officers right now, We, I mean, Barrett has been working on that nonstop in, in, in the Senate, and I know I spoke to the speaker. I think we're going to make real progress um, in the special session. I Based really on do. pay? Based on a number of things. I, I think it is pay, but I think there's a lot of other things involved. I think Craig kind of hit on that. I think he mm -hmm. kind of gave us a preview of what, what to look for. Um, and I think... Uh, My sense is it's going to become yeah. more of a... They want to make it more of a profession versus a right. job? Absolutely. And I think Delegate Kelly is, is you know, he's going to represent the House well on, on, on our side of the negotiations, too. He, he's invested in that. He, he really is. It's, it's, his, it's his baby. He's been working on it for years, and I think we've got a solution. I presume there were social opportunities, too, where you meet the delegates from other Absolutely, states? Absolutely, yes. Do you get a sense, shifting to national politics, the the southeast and West Virginia, it, I, what do we call ourselves in West Virginia? We, we, I guess south? It's, yeah, I mean, we are technically a southern state, but yeah. Appalachia, I guess. Yeah, okay. Appalachia. And, Appalachia. 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 Okay. Okay. Appalachia. <laughs> do you get a sense on how how entrenched is Trump in the the mind of the electric electorate? in the south uh you know based on what i saw down there uh, i don't know about the electorate but I, about the, what i saw from the people uh -huh. um and the roads and the signs and um i think trump is still a huge part i mean i mean it's no it's guaranteed i mean yeah he's pretty entrenched down there um, the neat thing is, we will be hosting uh, at the Greenbrier next year. So West will be, you know, be actually hosting this conference. Oh, that's next fantastic! Year, which is, uh, which will be a great economic impact and get some people out here to show show them what we have. So, I think it'll be kind of fun. Well, we it's it's so easy to get focused on on what affects us. You know, what affects me, what affects my community, and, and what have you. You said there's there's a lot of. Um, a lot of similarity between the other states. Yeah, our big problems are education and and just and bringing business to the, the state. Is that also shared, or are we kind of out there? No, I, I think you know, like for instance, the, the gentleman from Virginia was talking about how they have to re look at their economic development because West Virginia is doing a, such a good job bringing some of these companies in. So now they're they're having it. So we're all competing with each other, right? These, these states mm -hmm. are all competing with each other, but we all have the same problems. Yeah. You look at, <coughs> excuse me, you look at Florida, they pay their teachers a lot more than we do, but they still have the same problems. They still have corrections officers. They still have education. It's the same. I was shocked at how we have basically the same problems all the way through. So do you think maybe this whole, obviously locality pay, I'm not suggesting come off the table, but in teachers in particular, do you think we're looking too hard at at pay and not enough at work-life balance and, and just the, you know, I look what at, the job has become? I look at it from a different perspective. I think we need to, and there's a couple of things, I think we need to relook at the school aid formula. Like, take the one we have, put it to the side and build it from scratch. Um, that thing was built years and years and years ago, and we don't have any of the same and by issues. by school aid, do you mean student aid? No, so the school aid formula is how each school, each board, school board receives their funds from the, from the state government. So it, right now it's based on, you know, you get X amount of teachers, X amount of social workers, X amount of uh, administrators, whatever that is, and we give it to them and they figure it out. Um, I think the way 
we teach and the way society is, that's, that's changed. We, we have a lot more social workers in our school. We, we have a lot more special needs in our school. Um, our special needs um, cost of, of teaching is exorbitant, and it's, it's not re really represented in, in our school aid formula the way, the way it is now. So there are conversations happening, but I, I think that's the approach I would like to see change. I think that might help. Uh, but at the same time, we need to empower our teachers a little more because there's not a lot of people, there are less and less teachers coming out of college every single year. Nobody yeah. wants to be a teacher anymore because the position is, is, is extremely difficult and maybe is not as respected as it should be. Well, and I think there's, it is very difficult. It's getting progressively more difficult for teachers to actually teach. Yeah. There's, there's so much... I'll call it babysitting, for lack of a better term, and um, and the discipline issues and the things they can and, and cannot do. Yeah, it, it's kind of like we, we want to blame the teachers, and the teachers want, you know, we want to blame the kids, we want to blame the parents. It, it, it needs to be a pillar of all three taking accountability. And, you know, this day and age, nobody wants to take accountability for, you know, my little Johnny's the perfect little Johnny. You know, and yep. he'll never do anything wrong. <laughs> well, you know, I, just... I have long believed, like reading skills, right? If, if a kid is not reading, if third grader is not reading at third grade level, and there are not other issues, the learning disabilities and such, that's when the parents, that's not on the teachers not teaching their kids to read, that's on the parents not but, teaching but their kids to read. But you're still blaming the teachers in the school system because our scores and our testing are coming out for the rest of that child's career even when he's a teenager or he's going and now he's getting in trouble I, I think we should also focus on maybe less emphasis on college and more emphasis on actual work and, and you know the yeah, trades internships and internships and apprentices um, yes and more what about you know I, I had a thought and I haven't really had time to consider this so if it, if it doesn't if it's not workable you know I, I apologize but what about making like social workers who a, more of a two-year degree? I think there was a push in this last legislation to actually make it easier to get to their social worker status while still in training. So you, you don't want to just put bodies in positions, a absolutely right? Absolutely not. But you don't want to saddle them with a four-year debt or one hundred fifty thousand dollars debt. Yeah. So um, I think there are many positions and, and teachers included that you can do training and. Be a great teacher, like teachers' aides, for instance. There are some amazing teachers' aides. Um, you know, my daughter had probably the best one in, in, in the country. So um, it's one of those things where a teacher's aide can teach, you know, at a, at a kindergarten, elementary level. And we got to give them the ability to get to those things. The issue is still getting people to apply and to want to teach. And that's the the key, right? We haven't solved that issue. And, it, and it's throughout the states. It's not just West Virginia's problem. When I was growing up, like, that was a, you know, it was still respected and, you know, it was one of the better jobs to have in the in the county that I lived in and, you know. Well, you had, what, 22 kids in a class, one teacher. Uh, if the teacher said stop doing that, you stop doing that. Well, because they, they, they knew your dad. Yeah. And they would call him. And, and they would call him, and you'd go home, and your dad would take care of you. Yes. So you had a lot more respect as a child for yes. adults. Yes. Uh, I think when you look at it now, and I've been on the sideline of football games and, and cheerleading and peewee football and, and baseball, um, sometimes I think the parents are, you know, the, they believe their kid has, can't do any wrong. Well, I think I, I saw parts of that back in the day as yeah. well, but it, well, yeah, maybe I, it's getting worse. I did worse. too, but... Um, well, I cannot imagine a time going home and telling my parents that I got thrown out of class because the teacher doesn't like me and my parents taking my side of that. You know, what did you do to get thrown out of class? Of course, they knew me very well, and I did do something. Mm -hmm. to get, I, you know, but it, it, it seems like the odds get so much stacked against the teachers these days. It's very difficult for and, them to and do it. society's do. different where there's a lot more bad stuff going on these days. It's not like we're letting kids ride their bikes out in the streets until 7 p.m. now, too. So that part of it's changed. The kids are cooped up. Uh, COVID obviously didn't do anybody any good by making them all stay at home either.
Well, the very fact that we talk about school resource officers and arming teachers and hardening schools and all that, it's, there's a lot has changed. It's, the, the genie got out of the bottle somewhere, and, uh, and we've got to figure out how to get him back in. The Internet. Yeah. yeah you know, you can, you can look at that and go, the Internet and the way we communicate uh, without any accountability, um, you can say whatever you want on social media at any time. You could, you could be anybody. Yeah. Um, it, it's different. The, the world travels faster now. It does.